Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com. What if I told you that there was a tool out there where you could hook it up in a matter of seconds and read the health or the condition of the engine by doing what's called a relative compression test in a matter of seconds and telling you, is this worth fixing or is it not? How cool would that be? Think of all the different uses. Maybe you're going to buy a motorcycle, you pull up to someone's garage, you say, hold on, let me grab my tool. You don't have to pull tanks or air boxes. You can get right to the data to go, hey, that's looking good. Or you can go, ah, I think I'm gonna pass. Or if you're working on customer bikes, you could say, hey, no carb job is gonna fix you know, something wrong with the engine. You got a bigger issue here. Would you like me to proceed? And you still get paid for your diagnostic time and you're gonna make money super fast because of how fast you can do this. Um, why don't we get to it? Just let me hook the whole thing up and then stay tuned at the end of the video because I'm gonna go a deep dive explaining some of the other benefits and, and what the difference was between compression, a traditional compression test and this. And then also we're gonna have a coupon link. Uh, the fellas over there at PropTech are giving a How to Wrench uh, customers a special deal to the end of the year. Uh, stay tuned if you haven't done so yet, subscribe this channel because not only do we have their current tester, but we have their carb sync tool and their laser uh, chassis alignment tool. Uh, we're just super excited, but man, I'll tell you what, I grabbed this one first because this is the one that I think is gonna be the game changer for diagnosing your motorcycles. Let's get to it. Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it really fast in real time, how long it's going to take me to hook up the CT01 uh, Plus and actually read the data from the computer. So we're going to start a clock and show you how fast you can determine the health of this motor on the CBR400. Let's start the clock. All right, we're gonna start by timing what it takes to do a compression test. We all wish that it was this fast and easy to take a fuel tank off, but I didn't have the fuel tank or the uh, top lid of the air box uh, recorded, so I wanted to make sure and kind of calculate some time in for those two uh, removal steps. Little note for the customer, looking pretty good, about 185 across the board. All right, as I wrap this up on uh, performing the actual compression test, something to keep in mind is that I only film taking it apart, so that means you still have to put all those parts back on. If this were a case where the customer says, oh, this is just too much money, the bike's not worth it, they're paying for all this labor to go back together. And if, if you're busy shop, you got plenty to do. You can do other things and bill other customer with needs that'll actually benefit them. So huge advantage in my uh, opinion to collect a diagnostic fee and then uh, move on. So that that's one thing to keep in mind. So I, I stopped this at half hour, but it is not uncommon for like an inline four cylinder like this um, to have at least an hour uh, service charge to do a compression test. Okay, if you're still watching the video at this point, means that you are super interested in this, or maybe you've purchased one and you're trying to figure out how to use the software. So you're welcome uh, for either way. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into a slower deep dive of how I hooked it up so that there's no confusion about that. And then uh, we're gonna get in the software. I actually screen recorded the results so that you can see how to open it, how to create a file and so on, how to save a file. But more importantly, 
how to interpret the data. And then what I've done to really level it up another step is I went ahead and basically created a false cylinder on this so that you can also look at the data and go, oh, okay, that's what it looks like when it's bad so that you can make this tool useful. We know with diagnostic tools, a lot of times we buy this stuff and we get all excited and then we really never understand or learn how to use them to their full capacity. And then they, they just don't, they aren't as shiny anymore. And we tend to go back to doing the old ways of, of doing things. So this is really cool uh, way to uh, to use this tool. So let's just get into the deep dive of that and I'm glad you stuck around to uh, learn more about this PropTech tool. And don't forget at the end of this video there's going to be uh, and in the description below there's links to how you can purchase one with a how to wrench discount, a heavy discount uh, for the rest of this year. So all right let's get to it. All right first off comes in a nice case. We won't count this for the time. I'm going to show you what actually comes in there. I've been uh, holding it in my hand. This is uh, the magic right here. So we have a computer a cable and then this is a, a port to use some of these different cables to hook up to the motorcycle you're going to see here in a second. So for the test that we're going to do, we're going to do a relative compression test and that uses this one right here. Okay, I'll hook that up in a second. It's real simple. We just go uh, right to the battery and then on vehicles that would allow it, this one wouldn't, you can actually go right to a coil or to a throttle body. It's more for more modern vehicles and then we can even tell which cylinders which because we'll know what we hooked it up to. I'll, I'll explain that in more detail when we look at the graph. But like I said, all we're going to need is those two and then it comes with the computer cable to hook up to your computer. And then this is such a game changer. When I first started messing around with this, um, I, I didn't understand what they were doing. Wait till you see what I'm going to do. It makes it so stupid, fast, and easy. And then lets it work on a million different models with like no disassembly of body work or anything. So way cool. And then the only thing I'm adding to the kit is this uh, nut and bolt so that we can bolt this to the battery. Uh, and then it comes with couple more cables. This one here uh, with just two leads on it is for checking uh, sensors and coils, like individual ones. And then this one with the three is really cool. That is to test your charging system. And we'll do some videos on these two in the future. But for right now, let's just focus on the relative compression test. One thing you have to know is you got to have a, a fully charged battery. This is just like doing a, a traditional compression test. If you are uh, cranking that motor over, especially when you start from one cylinder as you get to the other side, if that battery tires out, which it will, okay, it will when you're doing a compression test, you're going to give yourself false readings or you're going to make yourself think you have a problem that you maybe don't. Sometimes, depending on if it's a real high compression motor, I might only do two of them let the battery fully recover and then go back and do the other two. Maybe I'll work on the bike or switch to a different project. So really, really important. If you haven't seen the videos we do for the Optimate chargers, make sure and check those out. Uh, these things are fantastic. I'd also recommend you get in the habit of just having this by the lift and always having it on the battery while you're working on things. Maybe you're messing with lights or anything else and just keep that battery charged. Okay, what we have here is just that this is so stupid simple. So we want this side to actually face the battery. So it is directional on how you install this. So we just loop that through so it's facing the battery. And then this is where we're going to take our little jumper bolt. I'll zoom into the software. I'm going to record it on my screen, but I'm just trying to show you how fast this is uh, right now. Okay, 
we are hooked up. Now we open the software. I'll have the links below in the video of to, uh, where to purchase this, obviously with that discount link and then also all the software downloads too. Okay, we are hooked up. Now we open the software. Okay, so while we're in here, we'll just start a new file. So we go to the settings here and we go to ID. I'll just uh, say I did the last couple of the bin, but I'm gonna just call it a CBR 400RR Patrick. And uh, let's see, it says kilometers, so, which oddly enough, this says kilometers. So 15063, 15063. I'll have to find out if you could change that to miles per hour. Okay. I'm hit okay. Now we populated that. And then over here in the function, I want to see what I want to do. Normal, inductive, or alternator. The inductive and alternator are those other two cables we talked about. So we're just going to do normal. Okay, and uh, that's it. All right, so we're going to select some things along the side. That blue wire that we didn't hook up, uh, that's if you did have it hooked up, you'd select ignition here. But like I said, it doesn't work on this bike. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit start. Okay, so you can see it's actually recording. Now back to the motorcycle here. I'm going to turn the key on. Okay, uh, one thing I do recommend if you're working on this, give it a quick visual that you didn't drop something down in there. Uh, normally, if it wasn't for making the video, this is something I'd have covered until right at this point. So a little tip there for you. But anyway, we are good to go. We're good and clear. And now we got to do is just act like we're starting the bike. Now, mind you, all four plugs are in. So we're working against compression. That's it. Then come back over here, hit stop. Okay. And then what I could do is I'm going to basically spread this apart. Before we dive into actual looking at the software, what I want you to see here is that we're looking for four peaks that are similar to each other and we start to see a pattern. You'll see four there the same and then you'll see a repeat of those four. They're all going to be slightly different so you'll be able to identify four of them that are the repeating pattern and that's due to ring seal, valve clearances, combustion, you know, carbon in the combustion chamber. But look for however many cylinders and a pattern of those. So as you can see from this we have pretty uh, comparable numbers here. So I could take and stop this here on this peak. We got 61. This one we are what, 59. This one we are 64. And this one we are 61. So this is just telling you that there's not something crazy wrong. Let me go ahead and uh, mess up a cylinder on purpose by blocking it and show you what the chart would look like to tell you, oh, wait, shoot, something's wrong. Let's go ahead and save this one. Spell. Oops. It is saved. All right. So this time we're just going to block uh, number two. I'm blocking off number two. Okay. Now let's see what a bad chart looks like. Okay, so we did number two, and you can see these patterns developing, right? See how this one's low? We're at 37, 61, 63, 65. So there's three identical. Now, that doesn't mean, uh, this doesn't mean this is the firing order. This just means that's what that cylinder is. So we know that we were blocking cylinder two, and that's where we're at now. We only got 37, uh, 37, yeah, look. 37 amps that we're pulling right there. So we know the firing or that's number two since we messed it up. And what this allows us to do is go, okay, all right. So that's the one we intentionally blocked. What do the good ones look like? Well, we know the firing order. So two, okay. And if you remember, it's four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, 
three and one and so on and so on and so on because that firing order is one two four three right so for starting from number two so that means it's two four three one and we could see that pattern but now what we know is these three right are looking good they're all on the you know on that same kind of plane and you notice that they're getting the same roughly the same amount of you know pulling the same amount of, amount of amps is before we created the problem but this is a real neat way to basically you know hurt you know quote unquote hurt one of the cylinders you could just uh you'd have to have the intake off to be able to do this to get to one of them but this is a fast way to check it um as well but i just wanted you to be able to see what a bad graph would look like Another point worth making right here is that there's actually a couple more tests that you can do simultaneously with no additional hookups or anything. If you take a look here, we actually have a battery voltage monitor going on at the same time. And what you can do is see the battery with uh, key off. You could see battery with key on. You could see battery draw as the starter is pulling it down. So you're basically load testing the battery and starter system all simultaneously while you're doing the relative compression. How cool is that? All right, friends, there you have it. Uh, it's been uh, a long time coming, but we're super stoked to finally have uh, taken advantage of this tool ourselves. This is a real customer's bike, and we were super excited to be able to put this thing to good use. So I'd mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, that there's a uh, hefty discount that they're putting forward how to wrench customers. So you can grab that discount in the description below if you're looking to have one of these for yourself. Uh, I know it's good till the, the end of this year. We wanted to do this as an introductory price to get these. And then the other thing is that we, uh, we, we can't stress enough how we're even going to learn about this tool even more. So like this is pretty, pretty new for us as well as this technology. And then with the other uh, capacities this tool has for doing the charging system, I mean, how many bikes out there struggle, especially older bikes, struggle with charging system problems? So the better we can make the you know, tools and put them to best use, uh, we're going to be better technicians, whether the do-it-yourself or the pro either way. We just want to fix it right. So huge shout out to uh, PropTech for choosing how to wrench to create some uh, training material for the company and then also training me personally. I've really enjoyed the collaboration back and forth on that. And I think there's still a lot to learn. So I would suggest you subscribe to this channel. Make sure and hit that notification bell. All new videos that we do with uh, products, if you haven't noticed, we have a playlist for product and tool reviews. So I'll create sub lists for these individual tools. And every time I learn something or every time we put it to a new model, it'll go in that playlist on the YouTube channel. So appreciate you, uh, all the folks that joined this week. Uh, it's been awesome growth. Uh, we just want to say thank you so much. Uh, we're going to get back at it. We still got a lot of work to get this thing uh, back to the customer. So as always, my friends, like, share, subscribe, and keep wrenching.